best and worst case scenario for Tennessee. 247 Senate, 247 Sports has 11 and 1 or 8 and 4. So no in between. I'm not saying, oh, I think they'll win 9 or 10. No, you can't do that. Let's go ahead and get it to uh, today's tough question. We'll get your thoughts on the message board as 11 and 4. 11 and 1, 8 and 4. Must be first of the week for me. Here we go. It is today's tough question, and it's brought to you by our friend Andy Mason at andymasonrealestate.com. Today's tough question. Take a side, take a stand. The Dave Hooker Show, a presentation of offthehooksports.com. All right, so here we go. 11 and 1 or 8 and 4. What say you, Caleb Calhoun? This is according to 247 Sports. Best and worst case scenario for every SEC team. We'll touch base on some others as well. Brought to you by Andy Mason, andymasonrealestate.com. Pretty simple. Best service, best prices in the biz. That's why he's been doing it for 40 years. That office has a ton of experience. Go to andymasonrealestate.com. That's where I'll be going very soon to find my home, save thousands or tens of thousands of dollars. So I make you pick 11 and 1 or 8 and 4. Kudos to 247 Sports because those would be the numbers I would pick if we were doing best and worst case scenario and you had to pick between one or the other. So if you had to pick between one or the other, are you going 11 and 1 or 8 and 4? Caleb Calhoun for the Vols. Then we'll break down the rest of the SEC or at least the pertinent teams. Sorry, no time for Vanderbilt. 11 and 1, 8 and 4. What do you got going, Caleb Calhoun? Well, if I'm left with those two options, I'm going 11 and 1. I, I don't, I, I would be shocked to see 8 and 4. Now, Brad Crawford in, in this article has predicted 9 and 3, but he's predicted it's 6 and 0 Tennessee start. If Tennessee starts 6 and 0, I'm pretty sure they're winning at least 10 regular season games. I'm just going to say that out, out front. I think what, what his prediction is that they lose to Alabama and Georgia, but then they also suffer a, a trap game loss to Missouri. I don't think Missouri is this much of a trap game the way people say it is, and I don't think you think it is either, Dave. It's I, I, You'd have to have another trap game, too, or an upset well, game at least. Missouri right? is right before Georgia. so. Uh, but I'm missing one. I got Georgia, Alabama, Missouri. Kentucky is the other trap game. Okay. All right. Um, I think Kentucky is a scary trap game. Okay, and if I had to pick on a pessimistic side, I would say this is a three-loss team for Tennessee, and I would say Kentucky, Kentucky, Alabama, and Georgia for different reasons. Kentucky is the trap game. Alabama is the revenge game on their side. It's down there, and Georgia is the best program in the nation. Georgia's Georgia. Get, <laughs> what's that? I said, you might, yeah, Georgia is just Georgia. Georgia is just Georgia. But to get to four is really difficult. Um, he says Missouri, and that's going to be a revenge game for them. I just I don't like their program and talent level as a whole. So I'm 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 having trouble with that one. If it's not Missouri, who else could get the balls to four losses? Could maybe Anybody Florida? Yeah, maybe Florida since since it's I mean again, that's just it's Tennessee, Florida, and it's you know, it's I mean at, until last year, we have to be honest, like Tennessee, Florida, Florida was almost to Tennessee what Tennessee was to Kentucky. I mean, it's almost gotten at that level where there have been years in the past 10 years where Kentucky was the better team, but they still can't beat Tennessee. And I mean, I know I, last year, notwithstanding, Dave, would you not have said the same thing about Florida? That Tennessee is basically their Kentucky? <laughs> um, Tennessee so, is their – that they – well, I'm, I'm not exactly following you there. That Tennessee. What do you mean by Tennessee? That, there, Kentucky? So with Tennessee and Kentucky, no matter how good Kentucky is, or no matter how bad Tennessee is, they went five. The, Tennessee beats them. Tennessee went five and seven in 2018. Kentucky was ten and three. Tennessee still beat Kentucky. They went seven and six in 2021. Kentucky went ten and three. Tennessee beat Kentucky. And and it seemed like Tennessee and Florida had almost reached that level of disparity until that until last year. No, that's fair. I see where you're going there. Uh, Travis says 11 and one. I'm not surprised, Travis, you are a Tennessee fan. What about the rest of the message board? If you had to pick 11 and one or eight and four, or we can open it up. We wanted to address this column by Brad and, but 
we can open it up to what you expect and what would be a successful season as we go through some of the rest of uh, the SEC. And when I look at the, the rest of the SEC, I want to take a look at Missouri first because this is the easiest one to me. It's eight and four or four and eight. I think the bottom could easily drop out, and this could be a four and eight team. So these are, are supposed to be very difficult, and they all are because you take it one step further as far as one more win, one more loss, best worst can, case scenario. That's what they're supposed to be. Four and eight seems plausible for Missouri to me. That would not stun me whatsoever. You know, it kind of would me. Dave, I, I get your feelings on Drinkwitz and everything, but I think we're forgetting Missouri had, what was it, three of the flukiest losses in history last year, that Auburn law. You know, they went six and six, and they, they should have gone nine and three. I mean, there was a terrible non-false start call that cost them against Georgia. There was that, I mean, the, that Auburn game may be the flukiest game in the history of college football. And I, there was one more that they should have won. But, you know, when you go back and look, you're thinking, wow, they could have been 9-3. and three. So looking at their schedule now, they have South Dakota and Middle Tennessee at home to start the year. They also have Memphis and St. Louis. I think they beat Memphis. I know they beat South Dakota and Middle Tennessee. And then there's Kansas State at home. I know Kansas State blew them out last year, but they could beat Kansas State. So they could easily start 4-0. And, and then they got Vanderbilt on the road. Look, they could be 5-0 and heading into October. Fair. This best and worst case scenario for Kentucky, 9-3, and 5-7. and seven. Nine and three is doable. If I had to pick between the two, I would go nine and three. I think that Will Levis's injuries, I don't want to turn this into another Will Levis bashing segment, which we've had plenty of those, but his injuries certainly uh, were in the way for Kentucky last year. So I wouldn't be stunned at all to see Kentucky get to a nine and three level. Are we sure that 10 and two is not their best case scenario? I yeah. mean, I'm looking now. They got Georgia and Alabama. Who else is a sure loss for them? I mean, I, I think that's a solid program. I don't know you're going to see many of these programs with NIL in the future, but right now I think it's a very solid program with a foundational base of high school guys that develop over time. You might not see those type of successful programs moving forward with transfer portals being wide open, but right now – yeah, I don't think that's Im impossible. But because of the Lane Kiffin time, let's throw in 10 and 2, 6 and 6. I'll tell you this. This this is the one team I absolutely would not gamble on. Ole Miss because, you're talking about, right? Yes, what did I say? You just had Lane Kiffin time. We hadn't gone to Ole Miss yeah. yet. Ole Miss. Ole Miss 10 and 2, 6 and 6. I, I, this is the one team I wouldn't gamble on because he's relying on the transfer portal. So neither would surprise me. He could have transfer portal guys that don't pan out. You could have transfer portal guys that do pan out. So 10 and 2 is possible. 6 and 6 is possible. I, I would never take the over under on an Ole Miss team because of how much the Rebels are depending on a transfer portal. I agree. I'm with you the, all the way. Do you think there's ever a possibility, Lane Kiff Do you think Lane Kiffin will always be in that 10 and 2 to 6 and 6 range at Ole Miss? Like, do you think there's ever a possibility he sneaks through and wins the West one year? If Nick Saban retires. But you think uh, you can get past Brian Kelly and LSU? <laughs> I mean, no, that was just one of the stipulations. Uh, so, no, I don't think you can at Ole Miss. I don't, I don't think that's possible, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. So, this is in the 90s where Wayne Mackin led Mississippi State to the SEC West title in 1998. Yeah. And then you got Florida at nine and three, four and eight. Now, if that's the worst case scenario of four and eight, they need to make a coaching change after two years. Yeah, that's a that's a big deal if they go four and eight this year. And this is something that, you know, we've had John Adams on before, and he talks about how Billy Napier was hired to be a program runner, not necessarily an in-game X's and O's game planner, which is what Dan Mullen was. Well, if you are a program runner, you can't have such a drop off your second year on the job. That's like rule number one of being a program runner. So you're right. If they go four and eight, then they need to they're gonna have to move fast and I mean, it seems like Billy Napier's already coaching on the hot seat, which is crazy. Yeah, I don't know if he's a sociopath like Butch Jones, but this feels like a Butch Jones type of coach. All right, uh, Texas A&M, best case scenario is 10-2, and 5-7. and seven. I think you're going to say 5-7 and seven if you had to pick between the two. I don't think this is extreme enough. It's 3-9, and nine, guys. They're going 3-9. Yeah. and nine. 
No, I, I'm with you. LSU, I'm just hitting the highlights. 12 and 0 uh, would be best case scenario. Worst case scenario would be eight and four. If eight and four was the over under out of Vegas, I'd take the over and feel good about it. Oh my God. I'd put a ton of money on that. Yeah. They're, again, outside of Alabama on the road, who's LSU losing to this year? I mean, let's call it, Dave, you and I both agree, right? They're not losing to Florida State to open the year. That was a fluke loss last year. The LSU team is way better, and Florida State's way overrated. I think LSU blows them out. Now, this one's interesting to me. The next two, Alabama and Georgia. Best case scenario for Alabama is 12 and 0. Worst case is 9 and 3. I think as long as Nick Saban's there, best case scenario is always 12 and 0. 9 and 3 would stun me. If he made a dip, dip into, into that, that regard, um, if he had two, by his standards, off seasons, uh, bad seasons, I would be very, very surprised. I don't know if they're going to go 12 and 0. That takes some luck. But, but I, if I had to pick between the two and 0, I'd go 12 and 0. You. There's only one reason nine and three would stun me, Dave, because all things being equal, I would pick Alabama to go nine and three, but they get a massive break this year, which is that their toughest games, Tennessee and LSU, are at home. And I think that if they were playing those teams on the road like last year, I would have said take nine and three in a heartbeat. And I actually would have put eight and four on the table for Alabama. But I, because again, I do think they're rebuilding this year. But yeah, they're not. I think Texas is overrated. They're not losing to Texas at home. Their, their third toughest game is Ole Miss, by the way, and that's also at home. So, again, their only tough road games, their toughest road game is Kentucky or Auburn. I mean, they're, they're not losing to Kentucky or Auburn. No. And I'm going to tweak this this last one a little bit. Brad has – Brad Crawford at 247 Sports has best-case scenario for Georgia at 12-0, and 0, of course. Worst case at 10-2. and 2. So, let's take a look at Georgia's schedule real quick. Uh, they're going to beat UT Martin. They're going to beat uh, Ball State. Then they got South Carolina. They got UAB. Auburn, which is at Auburn. Uh, Kentucky, uh, which is at home. Vanderbilt, it doesn't matter. Florida is, of course, in Jacksonville. Missouri uh, will be at home. Then Ole Miss at home. Tennessee, of course, in Knoxville. And then Georgia Tech. I have trouble seeing them losing two games out of that schedule. But I also think that they're, although I like Carson Beck and I've heard nothing but great things about him, I'm just going to be real frank with you. There always could be a quarterback blow up. Okay, I mean, there there could be a quarterback explosion. It happened at Tennessee in 2005. So if I had to choose between the two, I'm taking the two losses. I mean, because Carson Beck may roll out there and be the next great quarterback of all time. But until I see it, I don't know it. And I also think that Georgia last year, by the same players, a lot of the same players that will lead them this year, got complacent at times so they could slip up and lose one. So, yeah, I get it. They could win a championship. They're the best program going right now in college football, but it wouldn't stun me if they lost two games. Me neither. Me. Also, I'm going to do a stat for you real quick because if they went 12 and 0, they would they that would make three straight undefeated regular seasons. I think Tennessee is the last team to do that in the SEC. They did it in from 1938 to 1940. I don't think anybody's done it since then. Um, so three straight undefeated regular seasons in the SEC. Interesting. Uh, Gene, tell me if my echo's gone away. I think I had my uh, headphones blast a little bit too much. Here's the thing that Travis brings up that's very insightful. Chemistry is underrated. It's hard to have good chemistry running in new players all the time. Amen. And you want to think that this Tennessee team will have great chemistry because they did last year? It, it doesn't work that way in football, guys. I've been around it a quarter of a century. Every year is different. Okay, so Tennessee, Georgia, name any of the other teams that were surprisingly successful or were just very elite successful. Uh, take Southern California. Take TCU. <clears throat> they could have 75% of the same dudes back, and you cannot guarantee that the chemistry is going to be the same or better just because – there are same dudes there. I'm telling you, it could be as simple as 
maybe Hendon Hooker was the special leader. And I think Joe Milton, from everybody I talked to, is going to be a great leader. Maybe Stetson Bennett's arrogance was a good thing for Georgia. Um, maybe Caleb Williams and surprising people. There's a there's a mindset that uh, Southern California. There's a mindset that goes into each and every year, and it's not duplicatable. I don't know if duplicatable is a word, but you can't duplicate it from year to year. So Tennessee can't magically have great chemistry. Georgia can't magically have this clutch gene where they can overcome stuff. It doesn't just happen year to year. I've seen guys with champ. I've seen teams with championship mentalities that have come back the next year. Tennessee's a prime example. Oh, four, oh five. That came back the next year and something chemistry wise got in the way. And suddenly they were a little bit more okay with losing than they were the year to four people saying it's the same team other than Joe Milton. No, it's not. And that's a big change in and of itself. So we don't know the chemistry there. So what do you do in that regard? You bet on the coaches that have done it from year to year. You bet on the Sabans. Now I think the smarts in that level, I think you bet on the Lincoln Rileys, who even though he, he, even though he probably should have another championship, has shown that his teams are going to compete for a championship year in and year out. So that that chemistry, man, I'm just I promise you, you can't just magically replicate that, Caleb. So at that point, I tend to gamble on the coaches. And you don't even have to do 0405. You can go 98 to 99, Tennessee. I mean, 99 returned almost everybody. But not having Al Wilson on the defense meant was a little bit of a difference. Uh, not having Peerless Price, not having Jeff Hall, who, for those who don't know, Jeff Hall was a kicker and was elected team captain. That never happens in football. <laughs> well, and I'm not going to say this in front of in front of Fred Wyatt because he might beat me up. But the '99 team, based off what they did in '98, was probably a little too cocky. You're thinking you got Jamal Lewis back, T. Martin. They're going to let him. They're going to let him do more things. The defense is going to be dominant. Most of everybody returns. They were probably a little cocky in '99. Whereas in 98, they were the exact opposite. They felt like everybody hated them, so let's prove something. That, there was that type of mentality. Again, please no one tell Fred White that I said that because he could beat me up. Well, it was a mixture. I remember reading. So some were cocky, but I do know some were determined they, because a, a lot of them took it personally that they were always reminded of how lucky they were in 98. And they wanted to go out and prove everybody wrong again, and, that they were, and do it again in 99 because they were tired of hearing that. But yeah, I mean, there, there were some... Look, also, it just happened had to be in 99 that they had to play Florida on the road that year, not at home. And honestly, the 99 Florida game went very much like the 98 Florida game in the sense that Florida outplayed Tennessee and did everything to give it away and almost did give it away again. But that time they were able to hold on. 